you guys. Welcome to my art studio. Today I'm super excited about this video. I'm going to be going over how to commission me as a pet portrait artist. So I've been getting some questions. I'm going to kind of answer them all together in one video um, on how to go about maybe commissioning me or other artists, but this is just the way I do it. Um, this is my plan of attack kind of, the materials I use, um, how to get in contact with me, and kind of just some general information. Um, the materials I use, if we're going with color, um, I do color or graphite. The paper is called pastel matte. It's a very toothy, kind of almost gritty paper. Um, you kind of want to call it sandpaper, but it's not a sandpaper based art, but it just has this really thick context to it that really grabs a hold of the pastel. So the pencils I use are actually chalk. Um, they look like this. They are look just like regular pencils, but they're chalk. Um, kind of hard to sharpen, but really fun to work with. They're very rich, vibrant in color, but they allow me to easily layer on top. So they're great for fur and eyes um, for pets. I also use pan pastels, which looks like this. They are kind of these little palettes, almost paint palettes, but again, it's chalk and they allow me to kind of cover larger areas when I'm kind of working with the bigger papers. And of course for my graphite, I use pencils. <laughs> Sharp pencils, mechanical pencils, blending tools, whole nine yards. Um, I started with graphite. It is one of my favorite mediums, but I have been learning pastels over the past couple years and I love doing pastels. I've always wanted to do colored work, so that's where this started. So about the references, um, I get asked a lot, like what kind of picture do I work from? Um, what do they need? What do people need to send in? The reference is the most important aspect of, con of commissioning me. So if you're taking a picture of your pet and you're sitting on the couch and the pet's on the bed and it maybe looks up at you and you take a snapshot, that picture's not going to work. Um, it's going to be grainy because I will have to zoom in on it to enlarge it to kind of try to see the eye details and the details of the fur. It's not going to work. So when you send reference pictures to me, they need to be taken, I, I don't want to say with a professional camera because obviously our cell phones these days do take extremely good pictures, but you do want to make sure that the picture is high quality. Um, and that when you send it, it's not cropped in or edited in any way because when you edit some, some of these pictures, it takes away the quality. When you take a picture, you want to make sure you get on level with your pet. So maybe you're on your hands and knees, or at least maybe your knees, the pet is looking at you face on. You might have to have a treat and, or a squeaky and hold it up um, to kind of get their attention. Um, I know sometimes when you're getting on the ground with your pet trying to take a picture, they're like all over you. I understand it's hard to get a good picture of your pets, but um, it is the most important aspect of a drawing for me. Um, it makes my job so much easier. Um, so make sure you get the ears perked. Um, when you take a picture, if you're doing it on your phone, zoom in on it. And if you zoom in and you can see the eye details and the, the fur, like the way the fur goes and lays on, on their coat, that will be a good picture. Um, but if you zoom in and it gets really grainy and blurry, then it's gonna be blurry on my end. And it really means I kind of have to start guessing at the details, which I can do, but it just, makes it a little more difficult. Um, I do understand I do a lot of commissions for pets who are maybe passed away. Um, so I definitely work with those people because you already have the pictures you have. And it might be where you have to send me a couple pictures and I will kind of compile the details that I need to figure out to make it happen for you because I do always uh, work my best to make the portrait the best of my ability for you. Um, they've always turned out wonderfully. I have worked with some really challenging pictures, <laughs> but I always kind of just make it happen. And my clients are always extremely thrilled about them. So also when it comes to sending me pictures, um, I prefer them over email. I will have my email down below. 
Um, if you try to send them over Facebook Messenger, it, Messenger takes away the quality. When I go to save the picture, I only save it off of the Facebook app. It's not the actual full resolution picture. So you can send them to me over Facebook to see, hey, will this work as a good reference or will this one work? Um, that way I can look at it and say, no, that one's too far or yeah, that one looks good. But when it comes to actually sending me the final reference picture, it does need to be an email and the highest quality picture you can actually find. So as far as examples, I did pull out some of my examples of my work to show you. Uh, this is going to go over like the sizing aspect, what kinds, the sizes of the paper I have available. Pastel mat does come in different colors. Um, I do kind of choose the color myself based on the colors of the animal that's going to be in the, the painting or the drawing. Um, because the color serves as an undertone for the actual base layer of the painting, of the drawing. So um, that's what the color is for, so there's like a reason for it. Obviously if you prefer a certain color and you have a certain color in your house that you want to, me to use, I will certainly work with you on that. But, um, and I, most, mostly I love the, the, it's called a medium gray color. That's the one you'll mostly see. But of course the first one up, it's not medium gray, it's like bright lemon yellow. <laughs> but I will show you, this is a, this is a um, 9 by 11, 9 by 12, something like that. So this is an example of the 9 by 12. I'm going to get my face out, hopefully it'll um, zoom in. And, but I just wanted to show you like how big it is compared to like my body shape. That's my 9 by 12. That's one little one I did. Most of my pet portraits do not have backgrounds. This is another one, more like a real pet portrait that I would do. Let me cover my face, so maybe it'll get on there. So this is mostly the colors that I use. So this is that medium gray color that I love to use. Also, the color base is based on what I have available. I can order certain colors, but this is the one I mostly use. This is another one, 9 by 12 little body shot there so you can see how big it is. I do leave space around the perimeter here for framing. Um, I do always strongly advise for you to get your pieces framed professionally because um, pastels are chalky and when put straight against glass that friction can build up over time and lift pastel off the paper. You don't want that. Um, we want to really make sure that it's done professionally. This one is going to be an example of my 11 by 14. So much bigger. Of course it's not a pet portrait but at least I hope you don't have a pet bobcat. So you can see how big it is. Much bigger. I can fit a whole lot more detail into this. This is where if you decide to do like multiple pets, you would definitely be on this size paper. I can only do one pet on the 9x12s. On the 11 by 14 I could maybe fit three. I've never done three, but I would certainly be willing to and excited to do that. So that's that one. And I have one more example of... 11 by 14. Again, I don't have any pet portrait examples, but um, it's this little elk I did. So you see how big it is. If it was this way, of course, you can see how big it is. These just look really amazing framed up as pet portraits. So, and then really quick, wanted to show you the different sizes if you were going to choose the graphite paper. Um, the smallest I have available for graphite is of course a little 5x7. I don't have an actually drawn example of a 5x7, but this is my 5x7 sample. This is my 8x10 sample. So 8x10, you can see. It's my dog Eva, and she's actually asleep back there and she was snoring earlier. And my 11x14, which is this guy. Let's step back a little bit. So, little dog there. I can do a full body. Um, most people, of course, decide to just do the headshots. That is how I prefer to work, but obviously I'm going to always be willing to do and work with what you would like for me 
to do um, in your pet portrait. Um, so that's pretty much it. How to get in contact with me. I'm going to always prefer email just because it gives me a chance to look over the pictures that you're sending and kind of give you maybe a price point or whatever it is that we need to discuss in your email. Um, you're welcome to start the conversation on Facebook uh, Messenger, Facebook Messenger, my art page, um, Abigail Myers Art. Um, I am there, but um, in the end, I will finalize things over email. Um, so when you do email me, kind of just start with, you know, hi or whatever. But I, I want to know, are you looking for graphite? Are you looking for the color pastel work? Um, let me see what animal you have. Let me go, go ahead and send me whatever references you have. Um, tell me, are you looking for full body or just the head and neck, like what I primarily do? Um, any kind of details about the animal, the personality, I love to know those things, you know, share your story. Um, I love meeting new people and all that, so um, yeah, so just let me know. Um, feel free to message me or email me all the information um, straight up and I will get back with you as soon as possible. Um, I do work full time, so this is kind of my kind of my side hustle, but um, I would love to be doing this part time eventually one day. But yeah, um, locally, uh, I love to hand over my drawings. If you are from the Smithfield, Virginia area, Carrollton, Virginia Beach, that whole nine yards, I will bring my drawing to you and hand it over. I hate shipping, even though, you know, these days we always have to ship our art, but um, it does come to you in between cardboard, multiple layers, and protected with glassine art paper, archival art paper. Um, it's very well protected, but it's just scary and nerve-wracking when you've spent 15 hours on something and you have to trust it to the mail. But anyways, so I hope this video was informative. If you have any other questions, feel free just to message me and um, I look forward to talking to you. Thanks. Bye.